Hello, this is the TradeSight U.S. Stocks, Futures, and Forex Market Preview for Tuesday, the 9th of March, 2021. Hope you had a good Monday. Here's a look at the uh, ES Front Month Futures contract. This is the daily chart of the broad market. Futures form still hanging about 100 uh, points away from the highs, all-time highs, obviously. Um, markets were split today. The S&P was up, but the NASDAQ was down, and then late in the day, we sold off a bit. We'll take a look at everything here. Let's go through the major daily charts. So crude oil up 37 cents. Again, as the economy starts to pick up, oil, which got crushed last year, down to levels it doesn't usually see, is starting to pick back up as well. So when we look at, for example, a monthly chart of crude oil, look, we're still not quite back up to, you know, you look at where, where a thriving economy was, you know, the, you can see the 2008 to 2009 crash back to $30 a barrel or whatever, but you can look at everything after that and where did it generally sit between $80 and $100 a barrel. <clears throat> it's kind of a normal price for oil. Um, so it did slip. We had a lot of production in 2015 and 16, brought it back, then it kind of came back up a bit. And then uh, once things fell apart due to COVID, there was obviously that big spike actually in the negative territory for an hour on the, uh, on the oil prices. But... Now we're trying to climb back up. So, you know, the normal price would be between 80 and 100 bucks a barrel um, for a decent economy based on the amount of production we do. Obviously, we know that OPEC is uh, currently um, holding back some of their production to get prices up for themselves. Uh, so there's always the games that go with that. So we'll see how that lands. But right now, uh, it suggests that maybe the economy is really starting to pick up again. All right, so next up is gold, uh, up $8.60. So this is the inflation index, right, at a certain level. And it's near lows. So this, even though we all expect inflation to come back at some point because of the amount of money that was printed, gold is near lows for the last year. So inflation is not yet on the radar from that perspective. Uh, the S&P cash index lost 20 points. It was up most of the day. It sold off late. You'll see that. When I show the intraday action, here's the NASDAQ 100, though, down 369. This is like, you know, this is the problem with the NASDAQ, right? It's, it's 100 stocks, mostly, are very weighted into the big ones, like uh, the top 10, maybe 15, and Tesla's getting crushed here um, because it's just been so overvalued and it got added to the S&P and all these other things. So now that it's so weighted, you know, if I just take a look, we'll go, we would usually would go through this later, but if I take a look at Tesla, what do we get here? Like, this one's from almost 900 or basically hitting 900 all the way back down to 563. So this thing's down 300. I mean, it's down over a third in a month and a half. But again, very overinflated price-wise. Um, but that obviously drags the NASDAQ down more than anything. The SOX loses 157 points. Now, the key here is this is the big thing on the SOX, right? We had the 13 sell signal two weeks ago. Um, that's right on the money. And then we rolled over. And the target of the 13 sell signal is ultimately the red static trend line and guess what the low of today was the red static trend line so it has now completed what it needed to do to get that 13 cell signal that doesn't mean it has to bottom out here it just means it's completed the target of that 13 cell signal biotech's down 92 points they've obviously come off the highs quite a bit as the vaccinations kick in and the race to vaccinate and the race to get cures uh, settles down and is kind of won out at this point in time uh, the russell 2000 up 10 points Keeps the small cap index near the highest, which is a positive sign for the economy. The VIX up 81 cents to 25.47, but <clears throat> it was higher during the day. It's been higher a lot the last week, so it's not not really that exciting. The trend closes at 1.12, puts the 10-day moving average at 0.96. That's nothing that we care about in terms of a signal. Nasdaq volume was 6 billion, 6.2 billion shares. Um, I'm sorry, Nasdaq volume is 5 billion shares. Six billion shares. God, I'll get it right. 5.97, so six billion shares um, down from Thursday and Friday, but up from most of the rest of the prior week or so. So it's interesting. Keeps the 10 day moving average at 6.2. Uh, advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ plus 89 on the New York. Uh, it was positive 651. So there were more stocks up than down in the market. Google loses $89.57. Now, this will be interesting. Google's another one of these stocks. It's weights on the NASDAQ. It's been way up, it made new highs and all this type of stuff. Um, you know, but I mean, does it belong up here? Is that a little too much? Probably. When we crack the lows of this and go back and fill that gap or even lower, that's going to put more pressure on the NASDAQ, which is just so heavily weighted on 10 stocks. Apple 
cracking the new lows for the last three months. Even though this one hasn't really gone anywhere for six months, right? There's nothing special here. Uh, it's not like it made new highs, but it still is cracking lows here. Netflix down $23.06. Another one that hadn't gone anywhere for eight months or so. Still middle of that range. Let's see what happens if we break like 460, 450 or so. That'll be a whole new conversation. Amazon down 48.51. Again, another one sitting where it was basically for 4th of July. Now it's a little bit lower maybe. But just if you just crack the lows of the last couple of days, get under that uh, 20, maybe 3,000 level, no, 2,900 level, oof, that's going to take out the lows of eight months on Amazon, um, which has not been doing anything for a long time. Look at that 13 sell signal, though, right at the high, right on the money. Tesla gives us a uh, loss, like I said, of 34.95. No big deal. We discussed that. Facebook down $8.97. <clears throat> Another one hasn't done anything for eight months. Probably doesn't belong where it is. Starting to head back. We'll see what happens. Zoom down $26.50. This is cracking the lows of the last seven, eight months. Uh, very important to see it break this level. We were talking about that a lot in the last couple of days. Goldman Sachs, this is the one that's amazing. Up $6.82. Hanging your all time highs. The banker's doing what they got to do. Uh, TLT, the 20 year bond ETF down $1.08. Puts it near the lows. Um, on the treasuries, the Dow was up 306, but again, remember the Dow's only 30 stocks. Bitcoin, 54,000 plus, heading back towards the highs. So the cryptocurrency king continues, put call ratio at 0.617. So it is what it is. In terms of intraday action, uh, let's go to five minute charts just so you can see it. The ES, so we kind of opened flat on the ES. We went higher, we pulled back a little bit ahead of lunch. We tried to test the highs over lunch. And then it's just in the last hour or two we came back and, and just got into red territory a little bit. It wasn't anything special. It's still holding up above most of the last two days' range. But the NASDAQ side, totally different story. Uh, gap down, filled the gap, tried to test the highs one more time, and then the rest of the day was just down. So when you talk about what we call a bifurcated market, which means the broad market, the ES, is doing one thing, but the NASDAQ tech stocks are doing another, this was just one of those days, and it was fine because we had stuff... Uh, going on that way so it worked for us but it's very unusual look um, in terms of uh, economic data coming out uh, on uh, Tuesday which is what's left or what's ahead of us uh, here in the US we've only got the NFIB small business index at 6 a.m. Eastern time that's it so we got some European data overnight but that's not gonna affect that's not gonna be as big of a deal here so it's a pretty calm day for news um, <clears throat> you know we are still in March now you know keep in mind again the main thing here is what uh, Thursday between Thursday and Friday is futures quarterly contract roll a week week and a half from now a week from Friday is the triple expiration of options futures contracts and commodities so you know we're gonna have to roll the futures contract this Thursday to Friday that usually takes a big chunk out of the market uh, going on to Friday so hopefully we have Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday here hopefully at least one or two of those days will be good and we can get something done. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading Tuesday.